Hey, welcome back to the channel. No travel vlog today. Instead, we've got a project that I'm really excited about. We're going to be replacing this dinette table. The original dinette table from our RV was in pretty rough shape. You could see that the edge banding was all scuffed up. There were holes in the cup holders that we didn't even use. And overall, it just needed a lot of work. Now, if you're anything like me and you're working out of a small one car garage, the first step to every project is spending more time than the entire project just cleaning up the garage enough to get some work done. So step one, get the workbench totally cleared off. And now that the workbench is totally cleared off, I'm free to start piling stuff on it again. The first thing I did was grab some dimensions off the existing table. And something you can see me doing here, it's a trick I picked up, I'm not sure where, is I just usually write the dimensions for the project I'm working on directly on the worktop of my bench. I'm not sure who showed me that, but it's going to get covered and sanded and beat up anyway. Uh, and it works for me. So I took the hardware off the old table and set that aside, started to evaluate exactly how I was going to put this back together. Paige got me these little magnetic part holders. I don't know what, exactly what they are, but they're awesome. Screws stick to them. You can stick them to your workpiece. It's pretty great. So I've got two choices with materials on this. Um, the original table is one inch thick, and I could either go get a couple of sheets of half inch ply and laminate them together to give it the same thickness um, or I could use some three quarter inch that I have sitting here in the garage already. That's preferable because one I'm lazy and I can just use what I've got but number two I've actually got a whole sheet of that maple ply that I use to make the cabinet doors um, in the RV and so I can actually match the tabletop to those doors right above it if I use the same ply. So that's no good. I'm going to be a quarter of an inch thinner than the current table, which means that two problems. The leg will be a quarter of an inch shorter or off the ground, so it's going to sit at an angle. So I'll have to shim underneath the leg um, with a quarter of an inch, and I do have some quarter inch ply just a square under here to get this to the right height so that everything sits at the right angle. Um, the top of the table will be fine. This is just a test piece of three quarter. Um, the, the, the piece of hardware that actually clips over is going to sit flush with the top of the table. So no matter the thickness, this will always be in the same position. The height will be right. Uh, but the thickness will be wrong when we go to put it in between the two chairs to make the bed, it'll be a quarter of an inch thin. Um, so I'm not really worried about that quarter of an inch on the bed because right now it sits a full inch high on one side and it actually sits fine as a bed. So if it's a quarter inch low on both sides, no big deal. We can also add some quarter inch shims on the ledges that it rests on that we put at the same height. So I think I'm gonna do that. And the only thing I have to worry about is when I mount this board, if I'm not really careful to drive the Screws in a bit up at an angle. I'll drive them through the bottom because the holes in this rail are kind of off-centered anyway, and the rail's for a one-inch board, so it's really easy to miss the wood unless I kind of drive these in at an angle. Paige makes a cameo to come help me haul this uh, plywood sheet out, and when I'm working with sheet goods in my small garage, I usually just lay them out on the floor like this, and then I use. Uh, old cut off two by four scraps like you can see here to get it up off of the floor and then I make sure it passes the walk test before I get on top of it and start cutting so then I can just lay my cuts out on the board with a straight edge um, taking my dimensions into account and then finally just do a quick sanity check with the old table to make sure that you know everything looks right and I'm not missing two inches on one side or something so then when it's time to cut, I just set the depth of my circular saw slightly deeper than the board. Um, and that's going to keep the blade from touching the ground or anything like that because of the spacers underneath it.
After that, I just need to clean up a couple of the uh, pieces of tear out on the edges with a chisel and a little sacrificial board at the end makes that really easy. I find the midpoint of my new tabletop to help me center up the rail. Solid. Now I'm going to go dry fit it and see if the dimensions are right as far as it fitting between the... Oh hell no! Let's put the leg on it. We'll put the leg on it, then we'll dry fit it. Yes. So again I'm just finding the midpoint in a couple places and drawing a line and that's going to help me keep the leg nice and aligned on the table. I use my jigsaw to just freehand cut a little rectangle to go under the mounting plate on the leg and that's going to uh, basically make the thickness of the tabletop where this leg sits uh, one inch which is going to match up with the original dimensions of the dinette. I cannot overemphasize the value of having lots of just cut off boards to help you use as spacers when aligning stuff like this. So here is the dry fit, it looks pretty good. It's got some wobble to it and I think part of that could be because we lost a quarter inch of thickness and that's allowed some flex in this metal cleat. It's also just not as heavy and naturally with it being thinner it's, it's going to have the ability to bow in the middle with a lot of weight on it. I mean I don't, not by much, it would probably be fine. But I do think I'll run some, not really an apron but almost like stringers. Um, cut them long. They'll just sit in the middle and they'll run the length and they'll cross grain like that so that they don't bend um, and glue and screw those in so that it has a lot of side to side uh, rigidity. And so I think that'll be an easy fix. I haven't tried fitting it in the bed slot yet so let's try that now. Just a tiny bit wide over here still. It's close but we're still probably a quarter inch out. I can probably take a quarter inch and we'd be fine. So we'll do that too. But overall, that'll be fine. Something I've been putting off since our original renovation series is actually finishing these cabinet doors. This is just raw maple veneer plywood. Uh, so since I'm going to be sanding this tabletop and putting a finish on it, I might as well pull these down as well. Oh, I hope this is the last time I have to take these down and put them back up. I've run out of daylight. Truth is, like in all honesty, I've always been a really lazy sander, but I want our rig to look nice, so um, I need to actually run to the big box store and get my hands on more sanding pads so I can do it proper 120 all the way up to like 300 or something like that. I'm going to finish these with two different finishes. For the tabletop, we saw our last video where Henry got paint all over the table. We need something that's really durable and waterproof and it's not going to stain. So I'm going to pick up some sort of um, really durable uh, polyurethane and do a lot of coats on that. So that's going to be a really thick glossy coat. And then for the cabinet doors, I decided I'm going to finish them differently because I don't want that kind of heavy poly. I'm going to use this um, Maker Brand Simple Finish. This is made by Mike Montgomery, the guy who is a YouTuber that runs a channel called Modern Builds which is awesome. He sells this brand of finish. I think it's like a paste wax based. Non-toxic. Uh, actually smells really good for a finish. And you just rub it on with an old t-shirt. And so I, this is gonna, like I've done some furniture in the house with this. This is gonna look really good on the cabinet doors. We'll do two different finishes, but it'll be great. All right, so some days have passed. I've had a beard wardrobe change, but we're back in the garage. And I basically just set up a little sanding station here. Um, this is an old piece of plywood with some sawhorses underneath it. I've got all of my cabinet doors uh, so that I can sand and finish them all together. Got my table over there. A couple updates. I was really stoked to find these on Amazon. Unfortunately, they came in a 12 pack only, uh, but it's a little uh, one by one rubber foot that fits perfectly on this, um, I guess, aluminum leg for the chair. This was just exposed metal before. So we've had this terrible system of like a little piece of rubber that floats around somewhere in the rig and we can never find it. So we'd put that under the leg when we set the table up so that the metal didn't scratch the floor, uh, which was lame. So this is way better. Unfortunately, I now I have 11 more of these things, so I guess I better start building furniture with 
one by one aluminum tubing. I don't know. You might want them. I'll mail them to you. They were six bucks. Before I got into sanding, I decided I wanted to round off the corners of this table, so I just traced the outline of an old paint can. One of the reasons why the table wasn't fitting squarely between the dinette chairs is because there are some trim pieces on the corners, and the old table had rounded corners which fit around those nicely. So uh, just freehand cut those based on my lines and sanded them smooth. Now we still needed to take about an eighth of an inch off the side of this table, so I got Paige to help me pull through, and I'll admit this was one of the sketchier things I've put through the table saw, but we just took our time and it worked out pretty well. That's the clean fit I was going for. Pretty sweet, right? Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. <laughs> we just needed some color in here. It does need it. Is it stupid to put it in the corner like it's like, this? proportionally it's the right size to go under that cabinet? So I'm using pencil markings to make sure I get all of the surface of each board sanded, especially for the first round of sanding when you want to get everything even to start. Now I hate sanding, so this ended up being a long part of the project for me over the course of multiple days. Uh, but it's important to getting a really good finish down on the project to sand very thoroughly and, and evenly. All right, so going through batteries like crazy. But the uh, first round of sanding is done, and I'll spare you having to watch me sand this a million times over, but uh, probably two more passes of sanding, and then we're on to finishing. So one more change to the plan. Decided to try out spray lacquer for this tabletop. I like lacquer a lot. I've only used brush lacquer, and it's kind of a pain to work with, but it dries really quick, and you can get a lot of coats. So I'm going to try out spray lacquer. Got me a little spray gun attachment, and I should be able to put down, like, many many coats really rapidly it's not a very big table so i think that one can might get me otherwise i'll get another um, and i think that'll be maybe not quite as durable but durable enough um, in the same tier of durability as poly and uh, way easier to apply like a coat every 30 minutes instead of a coat every day for five days all right so i got through two rounds of sanding on this tabletop before i remembered that i had forgotten to cut and mount um, some support, I don't know what you call them, it's not an apron because there's no legs, but stringers if you will. Got a piece of scrap plywood of the same type, and I'm just going to rip this on the table saw and make two one inch pieces that are going to flank the leg on either side, and we will glue and screw those down and that will just give it um, some cross grain um, rigidity to keep this table from bowing and flexing under weight and with moisture and humidity changes. That makes some measurements and mark where I'm going to recess holes to uh, put screws in these stringers. So just find the midpoint and then mark some even spaces on either side. And now I'm using a pocket hole drill bit. Uh, I, I set the depth on it so that I can uh, drill out, you know, basically like pocket holes that the screws can screw down into um, so that they're not exposed at the bottom of the table and they don't go too deep all the way through the surface of the table. And then spread a little glue on these stringers, flip them over and screw them down. And I totally just freehanded this. I line, lined it up. It's not something that needs to look nice. Uh, it's going to be hidden under there. And then make sure you drop your glasses. That's an important part of the process. And get these screwed down and should be good to go. Okay, I lied. You can watch the final sanding. Bench cookies. These Rockler bench cookies were a gift from my brother, and they're great for finishing projects. You just put them under your workpiece, and they barely touch it, so even if you've got some finish on it, it can sit on it. So I just wiped that down with a wet cloth, and now I'm doing the can shake like a terrible bartender. And trying really hard to just put down a nice smooth even coat around the edges first and then I do the tabletop. Now it was actually really difficult to see in my dark garage if my different passes were overlapping. So I used a technique from Steve Ramsey woodworking for Mere Mortals where I used a backlight you can see here. Uh, and the backlight really helped kind of illuminate where finish had gone down. You can really see it from this angle. That's more like what I could see. So the backlight helped me get a really smooth overlapping set of coats. I think this is the fourth coat of the lacquer and it started to look really good. 
at that point after the fourth coat i was ready to do my finished coat and first i just quickly sanded over it by hand with some 320 grit sandpaper and gave it one last really good even coat of lacquer So on the bottom, my cam was running really low. I just gave it two really thin coats as best I could with what I had left. I don't need it to be durable, I just need it to be sealed. Now it's time to move on to finishing the cabinet doors and I'm using this Maker Brand Simple Finish, which is just awesome. Gave it a quick stir and poured it on. It had been a while since I used this. I forgot how generous you could be with it, so I correct that later. But even just that little bit, spreading it with an old, uh, I think this is a cut up t-shirt, uh, it really starts to get that finish on and you just work it in and wipe up the excess after um, you really can't mess it up you can't put too much it's it's an awesome finish and just look at that pour like i said you really can't use too much of this i put it on really really heavy you wipe up the excess later and this is what you get you can really tell the difference between these finished boards in the front and the unfinished boards in the back, just how much of a difference this makes. Oh, these look good. This giant mess of cabinets in here. Everywhere I can stack them. They look awesome. I'm so stoked with how this table turned out. Personally, I really like plywood furniture. I've built a lot for at home, so it's fun to bring that into the RV. But it fits into the space great, it makes Henry's bed well, and it complements the cabinets so well. Um, actually, I might be as excited about the finish on the cabinets as I am about the tabletop. So I'm super stoked with how this table came out. Uh, it looks great. It's a great replacement. Uh, we did notice that it definitely darkens up the space a little bit to go from like what was a white tabletop uh, to this to this wood tone. But that's okay because next on our list for this guy, we're going to reupholster these benches, but we've got a couple more upgrades before then. So if you want to catch this thing in action, be sure and subscribe. See how we use it on our next trip because we also do travel vlogs in addition to renovation stuff like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.